Hi, everyone. This is Tara Short with Green Adventures Tours, and we have Lori Anderson with Green Adventures Tours, and we're here tonight to talk to you about our Tanzania safari that we have been doing since 2019. And um, I, um, I, it's, it, I, I've, I don't know how many times I've been on this trip, but every time I go, it's like, it's a Nat Geo experience. Um, and um, I'm, I wish I was going to be on this trip with you, but Lori is your uh, fearless trip leader. And she's also had, how many years you've been going to, to Tanzania, Lori? I think this will be five. Five years. Okay. Five years. Yeah. Wow. Time flies. Five trips. Five trips. Five yeah. trips. Yeah. This is time flies, right? Um, so what we want to do tonight is we, we know that like each, I, I don't know about you, Lori, but I had a dream to go to Africa at some point. I was like, I got to do this. I, I, I want to do it, but I wasn't really sure how to. So I just kind of put it in my back pocket as like one day I'll get to Africa. And then opportunities started to roll. And um, I went to Uganda and then flew to Tanzania and created these two trips. And now I know how to get you to uh to on safari to have dream experiences and you don't have to think about anything um so uh tonight uh uh lori is going to i'm going to introduce green adventures and then lori's going to take you on a virtual journey okay um so how about we uh, let's 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 start our slideshow lori all right let's see here here we go all right, Green Adventures, we are now covering uh, 14 destinations. Uh, so uh, uh, check those all out for a lot of domestic trips, international trips. Hey, can a I just say something here, Lori? Look, uh, one of the things about just so you're like Green Adventures started in 2008 when um, a couple of teachers who I had been working with um, at another company that's similar to mine came up to me and said, Tara, if you started your own company, we would follow you anywhere. So then in 2009, we started, I started Green Adventures with my last thousand dollars. And um, we, we just did trips to Baja and Alaska. Uh, and my trips were designed to help science teachers bridge classroom concepts with real world experiences. And then in 2009, the Becoming an Outdoors Woman program gave me a call. Peggy Farrell at the Bow office said, would you like to do Bow in Baja? And I said, yes. So then in 2010, we did our first women's travel program. And from that original 10, we got 14 destinations. So uh, 14 years ago. And um, so it, these trips have been um, growing because women like you who are interested in going to these wild places said, where are we going next, Tara? And uh, so here's a list of some of those those folks, uh, some of those, those destinations. Go ahead, Laurie. Okay, and, um, go ahead. Oh, so, and when I created Green Adventures, uh, our mission was to help people fall in love with wild places through extraordinary eco-adventures and to protect people, places, and ecosystems through ecotourism. So I wanted your your uh, tourism dollars to directly benefit the local people that are there. And um, in many of our destinations, we pick uh, conservation projects that we support with Green Adventures dollars. And a lot of times participants will get on board and they will back up uh, uh, education or conservation efforts too. Okay, well, I'm Laurie. I'm here. <laughs> All right, I'm Laurie Anderson, and um, I'll be your trip leader on this trip. Um, um, I I realize now, Tara. I said I'd been to Tanzania five times, but this will be my sixth. This will be my sixth trip to to Tanzania, um, and I'm anxious to share it with you. Travel is my passion. Um, I got the travel bug young, very young, and um, I just interested in going anywhere and everywhere. And uh, right alongside of that is meeting new people. Um, I am love to meet new people and hear their story and their background. And I am just fascinated by all the awesome things that um, our participants have done. Let's look forward to meeting you. Okay, where is Tanzania? We're here in this uh, green area right here, just below the equator. And our trip is going to take us in the uh, Northern section along the border of Kenya. Here's a little view uh, of, of uh, some of the animals you may see. Uh, it, it is just a, a landscape filled. Um, every day we'll be seeing lots and lots of animals. Fan favorite, lions. 
All right, how do we start this trip? How do we get to Arusha? You'll find that uh, many of the main major airlines will connect you, um, often through Amsterdam, through Brussels. Uh, we've listed a few of the airlines here, Delta KLM, United, American, Brussels Airways. Um, it will take you close to 24 hours of travel. Um, I travel out of um, Chicago. I usually go Chicago through Amsterdam, Amsterdam into Tanzania. And each of those trips is uh, seven to eight. The flights alone are seven to eight hours. So add in um, prep time to the air, airports, layover time. You're talking about close to 24 hours of travel. Uh, the costs will vary, but we're seeing that it's running between $1,000 and $1,300 round trip from North America. And um, we will send you all the information um, as far as when to arrive and when to pick a, a flight time for your uh, departure flight back home. Entry and exit requirements. Um, be sure you have a valid passport with at least two blank pages. And this uh, note in here about six months is in order to travel anywhere international, your passport, the expiration date on your passport has to extend at least six months beyond um, the date you would be leaving that country. So um, be sure to check that out. You don't wanna be caught short. You don't wanna be denied um, travel. Uh, so check it out. Um, six months is the, is the key there. The tourist visa for Tanzania is um, a $100 fee, and it's uh, we can apply for that visa online, uh, the Tanzania visa online, and we'll give you all of the instructions on how to do that as well. Um, at the moment, um, for COVID, uh, their uh, proof of vaccination or testing negative not required at the moment. Our promise, you may be traveling solo, but you're never alone. We're your travel buddies, um, and uh, this is a this group at the moment is a small group, and uh, we will become fast friends. I am sure of that. Um, we'll be giving you lots of information to prepare for this trip, a detailed packing list, all of your entry requirements, suggestions for travel insurance. Um, we strongly suggest you get travel insurance. We've seen all sorts of things happen um, with um, delayed flights, delayed luggage. Um, and of course, many things that many flights that go without a hitch at all, but travel insurance, um, be sure to have that for your own peace of mind. Um, we'll be waiting for you when you arrive. Um, I will be in Tanzania before you. I'll be on the Uganda trip, then traveling to Tanzania. So we'll be waiting for you. And at the airport, our guides pick us up uh, right at the airport and get us to our first lodging. Um, that gives you 24-7 uh, uh, support. Um, we have support if there should be an illness or accident along the way, uh, and we can arrange for all of the necessary tests to return you to the U.S. if anything like that is needed. And our um, guides, um, they are with us 24-7 on the trip, so they um, uh, get us back to the airport and they stay in that airport parking lot until they are sure we are through all of the points of entry inside the airport. So it's very strong support from the time you land to the time you leave. Here's our team on the ground. Um, off to the left is Barraza. And in the middle here is Vitalis and Carato. This is our, um, our the local guides that we partner with. These guys know Africa inside, outside, upside down. Uh, they're proud to share Tanzania with you. They can answer any question that you may have. Here's a little peek at what the inside of the safari vehicles look like. Um, everybody has a great seat. Everybody has a window. Uh, we um, encourage you to move around, um, pick a different seat each day, um, get a slightly different view. Um, but there are uh, lots of room inside here, pockets behind every seat. Um, you'll find it's very comfortable to ride in these safari vehicles. The roofs pop up and open. That gives us even a clearer view for all of those uh, fantastic photo shots you're going to be getting. And uh, these, uh, we'll have the roofs open anytime we're inside one of the parks, unless of course it's raining, um, but it makes for an awesome, awesome um, uninterrupted view uh, for all the wildlife. This is just a little picture of uh, the luggage you'll find in our uh, packing list that we ask that you bring uh, soft-sided luggage, nothing with rollers, because you'll see that um, our local guides have to use a little uh, 
puzzle, their puzzle uh, solving ability to get all of the um, pieces of luggage uh, stacked into the back of the vehicle. And uh, so, so we don't want any hard sided luggage, makes it harder to fit everything back in there. What do we suggest for clothing? Um, a lot of um, neutral colors, forest friendly colors, greens, khakis, grays. Um, we, um, this little picture down here is of black rain pants, but we will actually suggest that you do not bring black or navy blue. Um, those colors attract tsetse flies. Um, so stick to the neutral colors. Um, we also ask um, no camouflage. Um, not even like the pink camouflage or blue camouflage that were out that's out there. Um, camouflage colors in African countries, in most African countries, it's illegal to wear any camouflage um, because uh, it uh, mimics what the military is wearing. So uh, keep it to the neutrals, forest friendly colors. Um, you'll see on the bottom right here, we have a little um, uh, image of insect repellent. Um, this is permethrin. And we'll give you instructions too on uh, treating your clothing before we leave with permethrin. And uh, that helps with um, the tsetse flies. Um, now you might be going, oh my gosh, what's the bug situation in Africa? Is it, is it that horrendous? Um, actually, it's not as bad as people imagine. Um, what I found in talking to people about Africa trips over the years, it's one of the first questions I get is, how bad are the bugs? Um, do they have bugs? Of course. Um, are they horrendous? Um, no, I've never seen them like um, uh, completely like, you know, surround us, you know, whatever, and, and drive us completely crazy. But um, if we treat our clothes uh, with this, that helps the situation. And uh, we'll also instruct you to carry DEET. Um, and um, we carry it in our backpacks. If we have a day that's particularly buggy, buggy we apply it. Um, but um, You'll, you'll find it very a manageable, manageable situation. Actually, we, um, it's just a few days too that, um, if at all, that we will, that we usually see the TC flies. It has to do with the regions that we're in and how wet they are. Okay, accessories to pack. First and foremost, you will absolutely want a pair of your own binoculars. Um, we see uh, the wildlife at, uh, at any distances. Um, close to the vehicle, out across a, a great expanse. And uh, you, you don't wanna be sharing um, binoculars with someone else. You're going to want your own pair. Um, Tara, do you want to step in with um, what type of binoculars you suggest or- Well, um, sure. even from a friend? Well, um, so I can put it in the chat too, the brand that I really like lately. Um, all of a sudden I can't, <laughs> it's kind of like, I wasn't prepared to actually tell you the brand of this binocular, but they're made in Wyoming and I absolutely love them. Uh, so I, I'll put the, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in. Um, and cause I find that they are, they're, they, they have a feel of a high end binocular, but they are, um, they don't cost nearly as much, but I carry eight by I, 10 by 42s are my favorite, um, type of like, um, uh, length, of uh, focal length, um, of binocular. Cause I feel like it gives me enough distance um, and also I could see things up close with clarity. Um, an eight by 42, I, I think that's the next level down. Those are a little less heavy um, and they can be, they're, they're good also for long distance and things that are up close. Um, uh, but you could also, we, I've also traveled to Tanzania um, with um, a $60 pair of like just general wildlife viewing binoculars that I got on Amazon and those are good too. But if you are a, if you're someone who wants to see the birds up close, like you want to see the details of like, you know, the eye ring and, and the, uh, you know, um, their feathers so you can identify them uh, before your guide does. <laughs> Um, with those bear eyes, uh, you're welcome to, you know, I, I would invest in a, a better pair of binoculars. Um, and I, I, in a second, I'll put them in the chat. Awesome. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, we have a picture of a, a, you know, what I'll call a, you know, like a big camera, a nicer camera. Um, that is really, that's optional. If, um, don't feel you need to go out and, you know, buy um, a, a better camera, the, um, uh, phones today have excellent cameras on them, and you will find that that will do just fine. Um, a lot of this has to do with your own interest. If you're interested in in capturing, um, you know, the, the 
the type of pictures that you can get with, uh, you know, the higher end cameras, by all means, bring one. I'll have mine with me. But I've also done Tanzania with just my iPhone and um, and the results are um, incredible. Can I say um, something about this? Um, sure. Yeah. So uh, with these like an SL SLR camera with a lens, um, you'll if you're if you're bringing something with a, a lens like this, you're going to want a minimum of 210 like that's the very minimum two two 210 mill, millimeters, but 300 is, is an ideal. And then of course they get bigger after that. Like, you know, and then they're, they're, they're big and heavy to, to travel with. Um, but if you're just like an amateur, just trying things out and you have a friend who's like, I've got a great camera, look for, bring a 300 millimeter lens. Um, don't worry about bringing those shorter lenses, unless you know that you're going to set up a tripod, maybe outside of your uh, like outside of one of the dining tents out on the Serengeti, and you want to capture a sunset or something like that. Um, you're mostly going to be taking pictures from a bumpy safari vehicle and you're going to be kind of at uh, weird angles and it's going to be really dusty. Um, so keep that in mind. So you're also going to want to have something to wipe off the lenses of your, of your, um, you have to wipe off the lens with like a, a lens cloth and maybe a spray lens cleaner. But uh, yeah, phones now, their digital zooms are so good. And we are usually really, really close to wildlife that you don't need um, the long distance zooms. Where the zoom comes in is really for birds, in my opinion. Or if you want like crisp, clear photos of the, an like super crisp, clear photos of animals. Um, and um, Lori, your camera is not like this. Yours has a digital zoom, but it takes amazing photos. And I think that would be right. great to share with them too. Cause I've, I've been like, I kind of coveted your camera for a while. I'm like, that thing takes, and we share all our pictures. You can have everything we take pictures of. So that's another thing too. Yes, um, my can camera is a Sony um, RX10, and it has a fixed uh, a fixed lens. I can't switch out lenses, you know, to get to like the super long lenses or anything like that. My lens is permanently attached to the camera, but it has a zoom that's equivalent to 600. And um, again, I I do not consider myself a professional photographer in any way, shape, or form. I got that nicer camera after the first trip, my first trip to Tanzania. On that trip, we we had with us um, someone who was a, um, uh, she called herself a hobby photographer, but boy, oh boy, did she have the equipment with her. Yeah. And um, and uh, she got some cool shots and that piqued my interest in photography. So that's, it was soon after that trip that I, I treated myself to this Sony RX10 and I've been playing around with it ever since. I'm super, super happy with it. Um, it doesn't take up much space. Um, again, because I can't change out lenses, it was pretty easy to learn, um, you know, all, all of the above. But um, Tara nailed it with, um, th those rides are going to be bumpy and um, and uh, you may not also have a lot of time to set up for a shot. Um, animals don't particularly pose, you know, they could be on the move, um, or whatever. And that's all part of the chase and part of the fun, uh, to, uh, chase of the pictures, what I, what I mean. Yeah. Uh, to try and get those uh, uh, wildlife photos. So yeah, if that's something that piques your interest, um, yeah, go, go for I, it. I want to also add too, that one of the things in our participant agreement that we took, that we talk about and trying to make sure that we have, you know, uh, like just we're all on the same page so we can all have a really unique experience is that we ask you to turn off the beeps and clicks of your of your cameras so that we don't constantly hear the like the fast shutters because the person next to you might be filming their Nat Geo moment and then like and then your your camera's like you know like like the almost like a you know a machine gun so if you can turn that off like some people's cameras just cannot. And if you can't go out and, you know, I'm not asking you to go out and buy another camera just so you could turn off the sound. But if you can turn off the sound, it'd be great if you do that. Also the beeps, like the dee -dee -dee -dee, like when the autofocus is going on to an animal too, it really just changes the overall dynamic inside the sound in the car. Cause now all we're really hearing, we're hearing more of is the nature sounds, the wildebeest and the hooves of the zebras. Uh, instead of the the technology that we're all looking at to record it instead of actually experiencing it. And then also, the, I, I did remember now, my binoculars are called Maven Optics. They're from a brand called Maven Optics, and they're made in Wyoming. Um, and I did put that that in the chat. Um, and uh, I, But when I have, uh, when I send everybody a link to this recording, I will also put in um, the particular type of binoculars I got. I believe that they are the C class. And I think they maybe were like 350 bucks, but they feel like an $800 pair of binoculars. 
Awesome. You'll find like while we're in the safari vehicle, um, you know, we might be you know going along the road in the Serengeti and our guides might be talking about this or that, or we're talking between um, between ourselves. Um, but when, but then somebody spots something and the, and the whole Jeep goes quiet because now we, we are really focused on, you know, where is it? What are we seeing? What noises are we hearing outside? Um, it's, it's just an amazing uh, moment um, every time every time that the, the, the whole um, dynamic changes and, and all that excitement of uh, seeing the wildlife. Um, down here in the left-hand side is just a, a little picture of, um, of, of straps that can help you hold uh, your binoculars. Um, I call it my birding bra. <laughs> bird, yeah, that's, that's a good word for it, birding bra. Um, because you will find like You've got the binoculars. You may have your good camera with you. You may have, you also ha or have your iPhone or, or I mean your um, your phone with you, your phone camera. And that's just a lot to, to hang on to. So you might, might want something that hangs on to your binoculars. Um, I've bought one since uh, the last trip to Africa. And um, I think I've got to, I've got to go out hiking and practice uh, with that on me and my camera to make sure I've got, you know, this juggling act, uh, act down right. So that's another, that's a suggestion. It's not a, you know, you have to have this on the trip, but um, we, we try to uh, suggest things that uh, make this as comfortable as possible. Okay, here's a little map of the area that we're going to cover. And we start out here um, in Arusha, that's where we're all going to fly into. And our very first day is, and I'll get into the details as we move further through this presentation, but there's a little park um, outside of, a national park outside of Arusha that I just think is a hidden treasure. Um, and so that is the start of our trip. And then we move in this direction and we spend a day in the Ngorogoro Crater. And we um, head up further up this way to the Olduvai Gorge. And we have our experience with the, uh, our first experience uh, culturally with the Maasai tribe. And then we're going to head further in this direction. And we have three nights on the Serengeti. Serengeti, as you can see, absolutely huge. And uh, we're going to concentrate up in this area um, over the course of three nights. And we head further south to Lake Aasi. And that's where we um, have our next cultural experience with two more tribes. And we head over to Terengiri National Park. And all of these national parks, you could think, oh, you know, one safari is, you know, just like the other, but they all have um, their own feel, uh, their own, um, you know, geographical points, um, of points of interest. Um, each one is different. And even though you may we may see elephants um, in in all of these areas, they have a, just have a different feel to it. Everyone is each park is different, has its own feel. Our accommodations um, over the course of the trip, we're traveling in like a great big circle, and we'll be moving um, from lodge to lodge, um, or um, tent camp to tent camp. The lodges, the typical lodge in Africa, um, different than hotel rooms um, anywhere else across the world. Um, in Africa, there are individual lodges where you and your roommate will have um, a lodge to yourselves and it always has an attached full bathroom, full shower, flushing toilets, um, hot and cold running water. Um, you do uh, want to um, use bottled water to rinse off your toothbrush. We don't ever want to use the running water uh, to rinse off our toothbrush. We don't drink the running water, but all of the lodges will be supplied with um, bottled water. Um, the tent camps also are very well furnished with um, uh, you know, regular size beds, um, almost always this mosquito netting that you can see here. And the tent lodge, or the tent camps also, each tent has a full shower and um, flushing toilet and sinks. Can I just point out that this picture doesn't do the lodging justice. Uh, this, the, um, it, like we, it's, it's semi-luxurious um, in most of the, like those tented camps are, are really, they, they, I say semi-luxurious because the, the luxurious ones are even, they're over the top luxurious. So um, I, I, I think next time when I do this presentation, we'll throw a better photo in there. Cause it's like, you will be well taken care of, well fed, 
and wowed at every location that you go to, starting at Lake Duluty Lodge. Um, I think about Lake Duluty Lodge and I, all the time, like whenever I go to Tanzania, like I feel like Pavlov's dog, or like I have to go to Lake Duluty Lodge. I just love the furniture there. I love the ambiance. Uh, so, and and then, uh, uh, you know, like just, yeah, there's just so many beautiful components and, and uniqueness to all these locations. And we do have a couple more pictures coming up of oh, the tent area. <laughs> um, but I also um, like to keep some of them as a surprise for when for when you get there um when i when i first went on the first tanzania trip and that was my first green adventures trip as well um i didn't look ahead to see where we were staying i just thought i'm going to be surprised and i read of course that we were staying in tents and i didn't know what that meant either and i think i was prepared to like oh we might be sleeping on the ground or whatever i mean i was thinking you know what did i know of tent camping from when i was growing up uh this is a whole different ball game and you will be surprised and you will feel spoiled and you will love it and you won't want to go home. Yeah. Um, uh, the First and foremost, um, mosquito netting makes every one of these places feel like you are in a fairy tale. Yeah. And, and we, and we tell you, but, you know, let, uh, uh, let the, um, take down these, you know, little tie backs and, um, and, uh, cover your bed with all the, the mosquito, mosquito netting every night. If it's, if your lodge has mosquito netting, use it at night. All right. Oh yeah. Here, here's oh, there we go. Right <laughs> I forgot that was the next slide. We should um, lead with this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's one of the tent camps, the dining room in one of the tent camps. And you can see it's very, very nice, you know, cloth tablecloths, the cloth napkins, you know, beautiful placemats, beautiful, beautifully designed, beautifully decorated. Um, all of the food, um, if you're curious, all of the food is cooked to um, Western standards. So that means, yes, you can eat everything. You don't have to worry about the salads and the water that they may use to rinse the salads. All of that is safe. Um, and you don't eat anything weird. It's one of the number one questions that uh, I get asked when I um, talk to my friends and people that I meet about Africa is like, oh my gosh, what kind of food do you eat? No, you're not going to be served zebra or, or you know, or anything exotic. Um, we The meals are um, a lot of chicken and fish, uh, some beef. Um, they're all good. Lots of different soups, uh, lots of vegetables and lots of fresh fruit, all kinds of fresh fruit every day. Um, and this picture on the right, I believe this is Lake Duluti. Um, uh, yeah, Tara, we were so. talking about Lake Duluti. It is, it is Lake Duluti. Lake Duluti. And so this is the first place that you're staying. You walk inside this room and like, gah, you can't, you can't even believe it. You can't even believe it. It's, uh, you will be spoiled, I'm sure, by the accommodations. Okay, here's a picture of the tent camp, one of the tent camps out on the Serengeti. And, uh, uh, yeah, they're beautifully appointed. Um, you are not like right on the ground. There's a surface inside of there, this um, uh, tent canvas and um, big screen doors. And I think the next slide will show you, here we go. Hey, Diane, that's me and you from our first trip to Tanzania. Um, and you can see all of the tents as well have um, windows with screens in them so you can get great cross breezes and you may want those open at night so you have a better chance of hearing any of the animals that will be around. Um, you'll notice these uh, tent camps out in the middle of the Serengeti are not fenced in. Um, so you will, um, very good chance that um, you will hear animals during the night. Um, you may see an uh, animal in the, the morning as you step out. This last year, stepping out at breakfast time, there was a giraffe walking across the um, inner courtyard of our uh, our campsite. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, if you uh, need to uh, walk from your tent at night, from, uh, from your tent to the dining room or the dining room back to your tent, and it's now dark, uh, the... Uh, the people that run the campsite will always walk with you with a flashlight. No one walks alone at night um, and we'll get you back there. And that's for your um, safety for um, any of the animals that may be around. Here's our group from the first Tanzania trip. All right, so let's talk a little bit about each of our stops along the way. Um, we've got, um, the first stop is Arusha National Park. And um, 
like I said, I look, I think of Arusha as just this hidden gem. Um, and uh, you you move between a, a lush rain, rainforest to a small Serengeti. Um, it gives us our first wildlife sightings. You're going to come around a corner. Um, you might see a giraffe. You might see an elephant. Um, uh, you just don't know. And it gets us used to um, getting our wildlife eye, our game viewing eye. And um, I, I'm not sure where everybody is from and where they live, but um, it just takes a bit to get used to to seeing wildlife. Um, I'm from Wisconsin. I see deer every day, um, but it takes a bit to to see them like in the woods. And then pretty soon you're able to see them when they're lying down. You're able to see them when they're still. And this is the same thing. You will find that the same thing happens for you over the course of the week. The first the first days, the guides are like like. Over there is, you know, uh, Cape Buffalo. Over there is this. And and you're like, where, 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 where? It takes a bit to find it. And pretty soon you're going to be the one um, pointing and shouting out what you are seeing um, from inside the safari jeep. Um, none of the parks in Tanzania are fenced in. And this is just a small list of some of the things we'll see here in Arusha. Giraffe, Cape Buffalo, zebras, warthogs, the black and white calabas monkeys, blue monkeys, flamingos, elephants, bushbucks, much, 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 much more. Um, if you're a birder, um, you um, are, are, are going to be out of this world. There's so many, many beautiful uh, birds in Africa, big and small. I was not a birder before I went to Africa, but I consider myself a birder now. Here's just one little example and one tiny sample of flamingos. Our buddies, the giraffe. This is a saddle. That saddle build stork, drying out his feathers. All right, our next stop is the Ngoro Goro Crater. Um, the Ngoro Goro Crater is awesome. It's this huge um, crater. It was formed millions of years ago. A volcano um, erupted and then collapsed, and it left this big bowl-shaped um, caldera. And um, it's, uh, as it says here, serves as a giant fishbowl. And we come in on the top of this crater, on the rim of it. We'll stop and look um, um, over the um, edge into the crater. And it is so far down and so far away, you can't see anything. You can't see an elephant. But there are you know, more than 30,000 animals down there. And then we slowly um, wind our way down into the uh, bottom of the crater. And that's when we'll start to see um, all of the wildlife. Um, this um, uh, area is big enough to support its own ecosystem. There's a lake, there's a river. And so you you have um, opportunities to see um, all of that wildlife, all of the action. Um, once in a while, the smaller cats appear. I have a couple pictures here uh, coming up. Uh, these are the um, uh, uh, crown cranes. They look so majestic, regal. Here's a caracal cat. They're bigger than um, than a house cat and they um, just are gorgeous and beautiful and hunters, they are on the move. These, the, all of the pictures in this um, were taken on um, the last few years safaris. This is a serval cat. Again, very regal, very sleek, beautiful markings. Here's the fan favorite, our lions. And you'll note the uh, the main of the lions um, down here in the Goro Goro Crater are darker. They're considered black maned lions. It's the only place you'll see them is down here in the crater with that dark mane. This is a wildebeest. We'll see wildebeest down in the crater and we'll see um, wildebeest again out on uh, the Serengeti. They're part of the Great Migration. Elephant. Did we get this close to an elephant? Sometimes we do. They come right up alongside the safari vehicle. These are our friends, the baboons. Um, we'll see hundreds and hundreds of baboons. And the uh, fun time about uh, going in May is excellent chance of seeing all the spring babies that were born. Olduvai Gorge. Um, we spend a lunch at the Olduvai Gorge and we have a... Um, uh, talk from one of the um, uh, docents there, uh, giving us all the background on the Olduvai Gorge. This is the place where um, 
many of the earliest traces of mankind have been found. And um, it's absolutely fascinating. Uh, we have this talk is right at the edge of the rim of the, of the gorge and they have a little museum that is also there. We'll have time to get through the museum. Um, it is beautiful. We have a little picture of it here. And excavations are still going on every day. They are still working through this area and um, finding stuff uh, um, all the time. This is the, looks a bit ominous, but this is the entry point into Olduvai Gorge. Um, these oversized skulls uh, letting us know, this is the place, this is where it all began. You, you stand on the rim of that gorge and, um, and you, you just can't believe where you're at and what has all been discovered there. Uh, next, we uh, stop at a Mas Maasai village, and this is our first interactive experience um, uh, with one of the African tribes. So we learn all about the Maasai people. Uh, they're very welcoming. They are very proud to um, give us demonstrations on making fire, um, different song and dance rituals that we have. Uh, then we'll break into smaller groups, and uh, one of their one of the Maasai warriors will take one or one, two, three people um, inside of a hut. Their huts are all made out of cow dung, and um, they explain to to us how um, a family lives, um, what their day is like. Um, we will have the opportunity to visit a schoolroom, and the children are um, super proud to show us what they've learned, and, and um, they sing a song or two. And they have a um, little marketplace that's on the inside of their um, village, and we have the opportunity to um, to shop there as well. Um, this is just a, an example of a dance. They're warriors. Um, it's, a, it's a dance to see how high they can jump. The higher they can jump, you know, the stronger and and uh, more on that warrior is. All shown off. So a few more pictures of the Maasai people in, in their um, colorful dress. Um, they will also, um, we have uh, these blankets that are in the um, our safari vehicle at all uh, all the time. And so we'll use that blanket and they will show us how it gets uh, wrapped around us and they, they make us a Maasai, a Maasai person for the day. Over on the right is just a, a Maasai woman carrying her baby. You'll see she wears extravagant earrings, lots of beadwork um, and in their this is a little example of the marketplace that is all around the center of their village. Lots of opportunities there to shop for the different things that they have available. And this is inside the schoolroom. All of the uh, kids are in here at uh, all different ages are in here and uh, you'll fall in love with every one of them. All right, on to the Serengeti. No trip to Africa is complete without spending time out in the Serengeti. Um, it's home to the Great Migration. Um, uh, hundreds of thousands of animals meet, uh, uh, moving all at one time. The wildebeest and the zebras, they're in constant search of um, of the rain. And so they make this big circular um, journey all year long throughout Tanzania, up into Kenya, and then they circle on back. Um, so we will, um, we will do our best to find the great migration. Um, every day is different. Every day is new surprises. Um, we never know what we're going to find, uh, whether we find lions or leopards up in the trees water pools, hippos, elephants. Um, you want to look not only on the ground, but up in the sky. The vultures are often a good giveaway of what's happening on the ground. Um, and uh, then we we, uh, we we look to the vultures, uh, they see what's on the ground. You can see anything from cheetahs, lions, hyenas, jackals, you name it. Um, the birds are everywhere. They're abundant and colorful. Here's a little example of one of the babies we may see. Here's a mama hippo and her little bitty baby. Here's a, here's a couple of hippos sharing a hippo pool. This is always a great sight to come across, a bunch of them all in one place. They head out into the grass at night um, to eat and then in the morning, um, uh, they find a pool and stay cool and um, out of the sunlight in the water. 
All right, here's where we sharpen our skills to see what we can find in the trees. There's a little leopard hiding up in there. If we're real lucky, you get a close-up view of a, of a leopard. Um, we were lucky on, on this trip. We had one uh, come out of the tree. She walked right towards the vehicle, walked right alongside. Gave us a couple good photo ops at that point. Absolutely beautiful. A couple of jackals on the left and the cheetah on the right. You can see she's got some blood on her, on her chin. Um, cheetahs, those poor cheetahs, as soon as they get something to eat, everything's trying to steal it. So it's not long at all before you, we may see jackals, hyenas, anything coming up uh, trying to steal food away from cheetahs. This is a different cheetah, different day. Um, we happened upon this gal um, uh, just uh, at the end of the day. Our guides estimated that um, she probably took this uh, gazelle down about 15 minutes before we got there and um, got the lucky shot, shot of her licking her chops. Here's the zebras. Um, I um, I like to think of, you know, usually we pass the zebras, they look so gentle and, and docile and calm, but uh, here they are um, duking it out and um, having a little fight, uh, fighting each other. So we're able to catch, catch that moment. A couple of lilac breasted rollers, again, whether or not you're a birder, um, the birds in Africa, absolutely gorgeous. The colors, uh, you won't even believe that they exist on birds um, and we see them everywhere every day. Here we go. Here's a fan favorite, Pride Rock, king of the, king of the kingdom. Here we are at the gate of the Serengeti. All right, our next uh, uh, cultural uh, day is with the uh, Hazabi tribe and the Dakota tribes. And the Hazabi tribe is truly a step back in time. Um, these are the bush people. They're nomadic. They move with the um, move with the seasons. They live totally off the land, uh, depending on the land for water, uh, whether they have to walk a mile, um, you know, dig in the ground um, a few feet to find water. If they're, if they're not near a river, they're not near uh, any other water. They dig for root vegetables. They hunt every day. Um, the young tribes, tribesmen will take us along and in, invite us on a hunt. Uh, we never know what they may find. Um, it could be anything from a rat in a tree. It could be small birds. It could be, um, you know, a tiny little dick dick is the is the smallest uh, little antelope. We never know. Um, they'll also show us fire building. Um, some years they've showed us where they find honey. They will teach us how to shoot a bow and arrow. Um, this is a day like none other. They, um, these guys speak with a click language. So we bring an interpreter along with us. Uh, they're uh, happy to share everything about their culture with us. Um, we can ask any question, and um, and at the end of that visit, at the end of that visit, they uh, invite us to join them in a in their dance. And uh, what's what's better than music and dancing? It's awesome. Here's a few pictures of them. Their warrior on the on the right. Uh, their bow and arrows um, up there in the upper left hand corner. And again, they they will teach us all and give us a chance to use those bow and arrows. Picture of the women and the children um, on the left. They truly work as a community. Everybody everybody works uh, uh, they, as a matter of survival every day. The Dakota tribes. We visit two different clans of the Dakota tribes: um, the um, metal workers and the pastoralist. The pictures of each of them here. Um, here's a. Uh, one of the metal workers, he starts with a large oversized nail and um, pounds it and shapes it and cuts it. And when he's done, he has a large arrow. Um, and they trade that back with the Hazabi, the other Hazabi tribe. Um, they'll trade for honey. Um, and the Hazabi tribe then uses that as part of uh, what they need to hunt for the larger um, animals that they need to live. Um, the uh, metal workers also make a large variety of bracelets. There's some of them shown here. And um, we have an opportunity to shop at their little marketplace as well and um, pick up a lot of um, different metal, metal objects. Uh, this is the Dakota, the Toga um, pastoralists. 
and their clothing is made from cowhide and a lot, a lot of extravagant and uh, detailed beadwork. Um, you'll notice this woman up in the upper left um, is tattooed. This tattooing uh, is part of their culture and a sign of beauty. Um, and on the right is the picture of the um, first wife of the chief. Uh, the chief has many, many, many wives uh, on the trip. We'll learn how many he has at the moment, um, but it's going to be at least a dozen wives um, and they all live um, communally and happily. And we also will go inside their huts. They will show us how to grind down corn and everything, every aspect of their life, milk cows, all aspects of their, their daily life. Hey, here's a great picture of uh of what what it looks to be um uh, dressed up in the uh, in the clothing and the beaded necklaces uh Tarangiri National Park is the last park that we visit um it's home to over 6000 elephants um here we see uh even more termite mounds um that uh than we see out on the Serengeti and uh you, you want to watch the termite mounds they're a great vantage point for a lot of the predatory animals um the cheetahs like to um hang out on the term termite mounds uh that gives them uh they're up above everything and gives them a great uh, viewpoint um we'll visit a water hole those are ever changing um you may, may see that it's uh, no lions around, nice, safe place to be, or you could find lions working, lurking um, over uh, off to the side. Over 500 species of birds in this park alone. Here's one of those lions. This was uh, actually lurking right near the water hole. And again, all of the elephants, nothing, nothing cuter than baby elephant. Uh, learning how to use this chunk. Hey, here's a group shot uh, from one of the last uh, uh, camps that we're at at the end of the trip. And here's how to sign up. And uh, we have a $200 deposit from now through uh, January 15th. And then um, uh, installments through February, March, and April. And that brings us to the end. Um, I hope I left some time, any time, a, few, a little bit of time for questions. Beth or Diane, any questions? I was trying to figure out how to unmute myself. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, great job, uh, uh, Lori, and uh, thank you for those detailed explanations on, uh, you know, the different sites, uh, the different, um, uh, the parks. Um, this like this trip is truly like one day after the next is um, is magical. And what I love is that two people on this call have been to, on this trip before. So Beth is new to Green Adventures, but she has indicated in the chat box that she went last year to Tanzania. Um, and uh, and Diane has been to Tanzania, was there in 2019. So uh, it's like we have people who come back on this trip. It's it's that good uh, multiple times. Great. Well, um, uh, Lori, if you might want, if you can go ahead and unshare your screen um, and we can take a moment uh, to, if, if there's any other questions, um, we'll stick around. Uh, I'm going to send an email to everybody who pre-registered because not everybody's here, but there's uh, quite a few folks on the, on the list. So I'm going to send an email with a link to this presentation and a link to how to sign up if you're not already signed up. And this trip is confirmed. but uh, So now we're just waiting for any adventure buddies who want to come along. So uh, feel free to keep sharing uh, the link to see if anybody else wants to join us. Okay. So we'd be able to, Tara, that was going to be my question here, is that when you send the link to this that would be something that I can share with a, yes. a handful of people that I would, I, um, I have no idea whether they'd be able or. Uh, yeah, well, that's all we can do is up. like, just, just say, Hey, would you like to come yeah. along with me here? Just if you'd like to join us. Yeah. Um, but I, I know that, uh, we will be get like, I, in my, uh, desk is your travel parameters. That's the next thing that's going out because the trip is confirmed. So you're going to receive all that stuff from us. Uh, with all the details for planning your, like how to book your flights. Uh, so um, that is, uh, you'll get that by Friday, I promise. Okay. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Lori. Great job.